Hey everyone, welcome to Pop XP. And before the show starts, make sure to click that subscribe button and click the bell to get notifications when we go live and we upload awesome new content. And don't forget, if you can, make sure to share our stream on all your social media outlets. We appreciate it, and thanks for helping us grow the Pop XP channel. Hey, hey, what's going on, YouTube? It's the brain of the mainframe here now, Sky with the Pop XP. And joining me as always is the teen sensation, Mr. Billy Tucci. What's up, brother? Nothing much, pal. Nothing much, man. Uh, oh, hang on. Wait a minute. What? Hang on. Oh, hey. hey. <laughs> it's time for the gong. Oh, so climactic. Oh, my God. I feel the energy. I know, right? We got the chi going on here. We the got a chi. great show tonight, Niall. Great and, show. Uh, very excited. Two creators whom I've loved. Uh, since I was a young man, a, a mere lark. A mere lark. And uh, so this is truly a great honor. And uh, even little, so I, you know, when I was little Billy size. Oh, little Billy. Hey, everyone say hi to little Billy. Hey, hi, little Billy. Hey, little Billy. We got to find that booth again. I know. Uh, we got to get a whole set. We need a whole set of little Billies and little Niles. I think that'd we'll be great. Wrap, we'll do giveaways. We can we'll, our cut our, we'll cut our own hair. And glue them on the top so they have a little a little piece of us. Yes. How cool would that be? Which hair though? Which hairs? I've got like four right here in the front that I could get rid of. I think oh, it'll your head hairs. Out. Okay, yeah, good. The hair on my head, Billy. The hair on my head. Okay. Come on. What are you talking about? Hey, did know. you see? Did you see the new uh She-Hulk trailer? I did. You did, huh? Yeah, did you? I did. I did. It looks, I, it looks I have cute. to. I was, you know, and I I gotta say, man, would you? Would, oh, would God, you? yes, of course. Yeah, she's hot, but she's it's hot. Fake. Why did they just get like a bodybuilder? I don't like, know. You know it, like, like they had the Lou Ferrigno, Bill Bixby thing. Yeah. And then have this, this body. It, it looks fake. I mean, like the still shot, she looks great, but when it's live, we, I, I know we can't run the trailer. Maybe we could run it without sound with our guests come on later to end the show in like an hour or so, and we could talk about it yeah, without the sound. Know. Because it, it just looks fake to me. Yeah, because it's CGI. It's CGI, Billy. It's not yeah, real. Yeah, but, you know, then don't do CGI then. Everything's CGI. Yeah. It's all CGI. Maybe well, you're I CGI. Know. I don't know. I don't know. But, you know, don't why not? Wasn't CGI. I think she's pretty hot. I like what they did with her, though. Yeah, she's very hot, but she's it's like a fake. All right. Well, thanks for bursting that bubble, teen sensation. Well, oh, you liked it? I didn't care. I didn't yeah. care. Yeah. You know what I do care about, though? Our two freaking guests tonight that are awesome. Yeah, let's awesome let's, guys. Let's, let's bring let's them in. Freaking awesome guests. Let's go bring in our freaking awesome guests, guys. Do you guys like comics? Do you guys like crowdfunding? <laughs> well, everyone, please welcome Carl Kessel and Ron Randall. <laughs> hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to the show. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> We've There's been doing this on the radio radio like bridge. <laughs> Welcome to the Pop XP. Welcome to the Pop XP. <laughs> this is like an old time radio show you know you listen you know it's really great the well, Carl, Carl speaking of old timey love your comic rack <laughs> you old man <laughs> what's oh, the yeah. history behind that behind said comic book rack uh -huh. what was that what what's the history behind said comic book rack behind you I, uh, I had a friend high school friend and uh, he opened a comic shop at one point in my hometown uh, which was a very small place so it was not a successful business and when he was liquidating, I got this. What oh, nice. year was that? Oh, my God. That was back in the 80s. Yeah, see, because I have one uh, right here that I got from, um, I believe it was, you guys remember, Com oh, sorry. There you go. See? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, that's you remember good. Combo Magazine? They were one of the magazines. Well, they went out of business, and I basically went there and bought all that furniture. Actually, my desk that I write on stuff. Oh. What? Shut up, Scala. <laughs> I just happened to have <laughs> random stuff <laughs> next to them. <laughs> So I, you know, so I'm like, oh, I want that comic book rack too. So I bought the rack, but I don't have the, the hey top. kids comics yeah, yeah. thing. I have this, you know, I, I shove hats in it, my you know, <laughs> hockey hats in it. But um I've been trying to find one forever. And they um, made re uh reproduction ones, I think you could buy. I thought I looked and I couldn't find just the reproduction um the, the little frame or whatever, the little I don't know what the hell they call the box. Or whatever. Yeah, so. it was just it was a, like a tin sign that went around the cap of the, yeah, it just of the spinner. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I'll tell you, man, I'm kicking myself. So many times I could have gotten a rack. I'm like, oh, what am I going to do with that? What am I going to do with that? And now I'm like, oh, my God, I want one. And I can't find it anywhere. Really? Like, like, I like can't eBay, find them anywhere. No. Google, yeah, really? Well, eBay, if I do find it, it's like local pickup. And it's like, you know, halfway across the country. So I'm not <laughs> doing that. Yeah. Not Is doing it someone? Somebody somebody just... Well, you said they're making them now, right? I don't yes. know. if the, There was a company that actually kickstarted it. Yeah. Um, exactly. And they recreated yeah. the racks. But, but they were not exactly the same because this is a uh, Jim Demonicos, Demonicos. isn't it? Dem right. Yeah, he did. He did. He did those, but he only could have, I think, four sides. It was square. And that was a shipping issue. I talked to him about it. Really? Oh, yeah. So any bigger than that, the box became huge and then shipping became prohibited. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, I bet. Well, it'll probably have to be what freight after that once it got to a certain size. Yeah, I'm sure. Well, I yeah, because I take mine to the local show, the shows I can drive to, like Baltimore, um, the um, the terrific con up in Connecticut. I take it to New York Comic Con because mm -hmm. I could drive it, yeah. and it's all because I set up. It's so many people like every show, at least one person offers to buy it for me for like five hundred bucks or something, nice. and I'm like, nah, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, Gotta do you, do you like the you know if you get the ones from like the 70s or 80s you know they they go they'll fetch for over a thousand bucks if they're in decent shape yeah, well, my thing old. is that i want that rusty screech yeah, like, yeah. My, <laughs> like when my wife is there i just be like <laughs> yes oh that's, oh, that's great it. that is <laughs> fantastic it squeaks it's got the squeak it came with the squeak that adds what a thousand dollars right there you gotta have the squeak oh I didn't know it was a contest. Oh. <laughs> Hang on, Billy. Listen to my prosthetic leg. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just love this stuff. Uh, love it. Yes, yes. So what, let me, you know, Carl, how have you been? Ron, how have you been? It's been a little bit since you guys have been on the show. What's new? Um, Ron moved away. Yeah, Ron moved to Ron. Water he, he was living too close to me, so he moved away. The town he grew in, grew up in, I drove him out of. Oh, <laughs> Carl's just that insidious. Yeah, he's that powerful. So yeah. Carl, why would yeah. you do that? I mean, uh, Ron, why would you do that? Why just would in I my nature, away? Billy. In my nature. <laughs> you're you're a loner, right? You just have you're you're you, you, you just keep rolling. The town was, the your town round was not big enough for both of us. Yeah. <laughs> hey Ron, Ron, we're getting like a popping noise coming from your your end. Oh, is it from me? Yeah. yeah, I am not. I don't know what that's from. I mean, hmm. well, Ron, it was great having you on. So uh, we'll see you. Now. Good luck with your campaign. I guess this means Carl wins. <laughs> He's sabotaged now. Uh, Citizen Ronan says, "Sounds like the Predator." Oh, I hope not. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh, well, yeah. Ron, yeah, I wondered where the noise was coming from. I thought he was typing. I thought Ron was typing. I don't think he was typing. But now I he's don't think sideways. he was either. Oh, now he's gone. Oh, oh he'll, well, he'll let's talk go. about let's 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 talk about some impossible Jones. Yeah, well, let's take yes. advantage of this moment. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> First off, though, I do have to say, you guys had what's this competition I saw? Yeah, uh, yeah, Ron and media. I decided uh, today to do a, a thousand dollar throwdown. And to see which of us could raise a thousand dollars first, you know what? Started at nine a.m. today, and there's Ron. Oh, I, I think you I might think be good. Asked. I'll try All to right. behave myself now. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> they were just asking about the throwdown, so I was just starting to give them the 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 skeleton of it. Is you know whatever our uh, amounts were at nine a.m., we had to beat that by a thousand each of us. And uh, Ron called in some heavy hitters. He uh, he hit. <laughs> Pretty quickly by noon, we were done. I, I, when Ron and I were putting this together, we thought this could go on for days. We had no idea. Yeah, yeah. But um, but by noon, you know, we started at, at nine, and by noon, uh, Ron had well broken a thousand dollars, and I ended up at about eight hundred. That so I was a little behind, not a lot, not embarrassing. Not a lot. But Wait, um, I'm sorry. Was, and how do, how long are you going to run it for? We were going to run it till one of us got a thousand dollars. Oh, perfect. That could have been years. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should you up the maybe you should up the ante. This is a medium where you could literally make hundreds of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know it so well. <laughs> right. All right. Gary so, Gary Cohn always Gary. The first time I heard that was from Gary Cohn, and he still says that every time we we get together. 
he'll uh he come he's down in um virginia but his mom lives near me uh-huh. so well he'll come up every couple of months and we we do our annual yeah you know, uh, annual probably quarterly you know we go to, to a diner for breakfast or lunch at <laughs> oh, least good. at least once you know one day while he's up for the for the oh, the week or all and he and just uh, he always comes back to that because we you know we all have the same conversations you know and uh you know movies and 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 the industry and books and and he just he always brings that up how much how fortunate we are to make hundreds of dollars in this industry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Gary's great. Gary's great. Yeah, he's a good guy. It, uh, but let's jump into let's talk a little impossible. What we have going on here now? This is for is this the third campaign for Impossible Jones? Uh, we had the graphic novel, and then we yep. had two uh, two regular well regular comics, and so this is actually the third. I'm doing three team up books, so you see the right. C that's there. This is the third of the of the four team up books, and we did Impossible Jones of, uh, and Holly Days was the first one. Impossible Jones and Captain Lightning was the second. This is Hop, uh, Impossible Jones and Polecat. Polecat, a character I created in second grade, and is finally seeing the light of day. Ah, uh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. What? It, well, what inspired Polecat? What in second second grade Carl? What inspired you to then create? Polecat? I will tell you the name Polecat, and I thought he's a cat with a pole, you know. And I thought, <laughs> and the thing is, I thought, why has no one named a character this? It's because Polecat is slang for skunk. That's why no one has named a character that. Oh, okay. And um, I didn't know that as a kid. So when I was a kid, I drew a lot of stories about Polecat in my little sketchbooks. And uh, when I was looking for characters to put uh, supporting characters for Impossible Jones, I thought of Captain Lightning, who I also created in second grade. And I thought of Polecat, who I always really liked. And so I decided, well, he's a city boy. And, and not that I was a city boy. I was just a, two, a second grader. But as a city boy, <laughs> he didn't know what a polecat was. So he names himself that. And by the time he realizes his mistake, it's too late. He's stuck with it. And that's funny, though. <laughs> that's funny. That works. That's great. <laughs> yeah. And Captain so, Lightning is a great name, too. Yeah, that was oh, that once again, uh, second grade Carl. You know, an excellent name though. I love that name. Second grade Carl's a genius, <laughs> a marketing genius. <laughs> I, was, I didn't. Carl, someday anything. you're gonna make like, this, this cake is in the shape of a cup. It's a cupcake. <laughs> Dang it, Carl, you did it again. <laughs> so that's oh. where Polecat came from. Yeah. Awesome. So let's talk about the campaign, though. I mean, you're doing good. You got four. You got two weeks left to go on this campaign. You broke over thirty k, and uh, wow, you're you're already over seven hundred and fifty backers. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of fulfillment. I'm very happy. Can't complain about that. So yeah, but yeah, we're hoping to get a hundred more great. by the end. Mm-hmm. So, but we are we are fully funded. So, and David David draws such great characters. Yeah, I, I love it. Really, I love the, it's the style of everything here. And then we're, our current stretch goal is for these little cute chibis, uh, which are drawn by uh, Jean Carlo Bernal. He's a wonderful artist from the Philippines. He uh, uh, draws a book. He, there's another book on Kickstarter. I'm going to give it a little shout out right now called, uh, oh, what something, The Demon Eater. What's her first name? Ron's gone. Ron knows. Um, but it's by. He it's, he, if he's having a problem, he should just now just tell him to mute. Ron, if you can hear us. Just mute your camera when you're not your your mic when you're not talking. He's still on. He just shut his camera off. Oh, there he yeah, is. Yeah, just just keep yourself. Oh, he's moving. There he goes. I think he's probably going to try. Carl. It's like it's, a, okay. it's like an episode but, um, of cops when they're Keisha, walking around. Keisha, I think Keisha Demon Eater. If you if you if you like Google Demon Eater on uh, on uh, Kickstarter. It, he's a phenomenal artist, and uh, what he does here, these are cute, but he just does uh, his. his he just is a phenomenal artist, believe me. I mean, I'm and lucky that he agrees to do these little chibis for me. Here's another one he did of Impossible Jones. That is great. What a great style. I know. I love and, it. If, so cool. and his realistic stuff, I mean, here he's playing around, but his yeah. realistic stuff is is amazing. It's amazing. Oh, wow. So got a little bonus print that everyone gets now, drawn by Derek Charm, who did the Kid Constantine book that DC put out a little while ago. I read that book. I loved it. And so I got him to draw it. Awesome. That that has a little bit of a uh, Archie style too. To it looks like too. It's a, it's a, it's on the that edge of Archie. Yeah, the edge of Archie. Yeah, it's it's kind of somewhere between like uh, Mike Parabek and Archie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So and then here I got a deal going with um, Andrew Clemson, who does this wonderful book called Damsel from Distress, who's kind of like 
the woman from Uncle, but in fantasy world. You know, so there's oh, nice. elves and trolls, and but she's a spy. And um, I love this book. It is so good. Her boss is a talking frog. And <laughs> look up, look up, damsel from distress. Also on Kickstarter right now. It's well worth supporting. Very so, cool. and then here we are. This is the cover of our book. That's gorgeous. And, uh, it's you know the story involves Polecat and Impossible Jones investigating a, a, a number of hauntings in the area, and that's when they run across Zeus Karnacki, Ghost Finder. But even more interesting are these two uh, alternate covers we have. I was able to finagle Bill Sienkiewicz oh. and Stuart Immonen. How cool is that? Those two covers are awesome. I know. I feel are. like I'm seeing Bill everywhere. Yeah, Everything he does on social media, I keep getting notifications. And I don't know why. It's just like every two seconds, he does something. Bill comment on this. Bill comment on that. Bill, Bill, Bill. I'm like, God, this must be a sign we have to be best friends. So my people are trying to get a hold of his people. And but no, I love this cover. I love what it's really did. great. That's so yeah. Cool. No, now, it's really, did he just put it together, or did you actually have input on like what he was going to do? Well, I you know I just I, I I asked him if I could see a sketch, and really what he sent me with was this like squiggle, and he goes, uh, "She'll be like reaching up and down," and and that's like all he said. You know, and I trust Bill's sensibilities. You know, um, and yeah. it's it's the you know there's no doubt about it. The cover pops. It's really striking. It's wonderful. It's beautiful. I, I'm in, I'm in his debt. Uh, it's so wonderful. And then Stuart, you know, Stuart's, he's done doing a few comic projects now, but I happened to reach out to him when he was between international travels. He had just come back from some, the wilds of Vancouver Island, and then he was about to leave for a five month trip through, through the United States. And he goes, yeah, I got a few days. I'll draw you a cover. <laughs> so that was wow. lucky. That was really lucky. <laughs> and then he hands in this and it's just an astounding that's incredible. Covers. And we got a uh, J Dread. Uh, hmm. This campaign could possibly get me to back something on Kickstarter. I well, Judge Dread, please, please Judge Dread. No, I would. I would never trade Mister Tucci. I would never trade him. Call me Bill. You know, but what are you gonna do? <laughs> Dude, this is so cool. That's awesome. It, that, I yeah. Love that. So I what's the story? People. Okay, you created these. Oh, oh you want to go through everything else? He's, he's just. He's just. Scrolling yeah, through. I'm just scrolling through some stuff to get to some of the interiors. See, there's awesome the interior pages, yeah, where there's a ghost. I get oh, it. Oh, she a flapper ghost? Yeah, she's from the 20s, you know? Excellent. And she's got a slit throat. And But here comes Zeus, Zeus Karnacki, ghost finder, and he stops her with his electroectogram <laughs> and uh, has her go towards the light. Oh, Mr. LaPresti's Zeus in the house. What Carl's got happening oh, comics. What's up, hey, Aaron? I, I have to say, when you guys were running your credits, I saw <coughs> uh, a little flash of Wraith of God. Aaron's yes. Book, yeah. Well, you know, the funny thing is, is what Niall and I were talking about before you guys joined is that now going forward, we have guests. We should reach out to their friends and have surprise guests on. And we were talking about yes. cross gen and all. I'm like, oh, we should, you know, and uh, yeah. but then we could just like, hey, come on in. And and like, like, Carl, this is your Taylor girlfriend eight. from the eighth grade. Oh, oh my God. God. Yeah, you found your seventh grade. Hey, Carl, really remember teacher. me? <laughs> I, you know what? I tell you, the, my girlfriend from high school, I tracked her down a few years ago, and uh, she works at her job. I think she's probably retired now, but her job was for the CIA teaching spies how to um, resist interrogation techniques. Oh, my God. Wow. That was her job. Wow. <laughs> Imagine, being, yeah. imagine, imagine marrying imagine her, though. Imagine married her. Like, he <laughs> wouldn't get anything yeah, out of her. tried to lie to her. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like, instantly like, like, I was bowling with the guy. Uh, I was out bowling, I swear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And even if it's true, if she doesn't believe you, she's good. <laughs> what can you do? Yeah. She, like, read your pulse, knows you're lying. <laughs> so, but, uh, yeah, and then, here, you know, here you've got uh, Holly Days, who's our Christmas-themed thief, and Polecat is trying to you know, she has stolen a Christmas Fabergé egg and they're trying to get it back. And um, the, the thing is, it's the middle of the night, so she's in a nightie and her henchmen are all just in shorts. What, you know, you wonder what they were up to. Yeah, 
I love, dude. I just, oh, I really yeah. love just the whole Impossible Jones line you've had, even from the first time we had John. I always love the interiors of these books. Uh, well, David you is know? an amazing artist. He's real, and I want also want to give a shout out here. Wait, before you scroll in further, this is one of my favorite lines you, she, where Holly says, "Will you talk to your costume coworker? We were in the middle of a very important business meeting when he busted in." <laughs> <laughs> See, this but, is what um, comics are about. This is what yeah, comics is fun, are about. You know? you know, action, fun. You know, yeah. you know, so much of these comics today, I don't know if it's the writers that take themselves too seriously. You know, I mean, I don't think us artists, you know, well, some, I guess we do too. But um, I love the whimsical about it. I love the, you know, the Holly Days, what a great name. You know, I, I just, it's, it's fun. It's moving. Exactly um, right. There's motion to it. It's, yeah, I love the style. It's I, not like they're sitting in a Starbucks talking, and and then they go somewhere else to sit around and talk. You know. But um, and I, I will say, you know, the thing I think back to all the time, all the time, I think back to Stan and Jack on Fantastic Four, and I remember as a kid laughing so hard at some of the dialogue. <laughs> there's there's an interchange between Johnny and Ben Grimm, and he's eating like a stack of flapjacks, you know, just shoving it all in his mouth. And Johnny's like going, ah, go haunt a house, he says. And yeah. I, remember, <laughs> I remember when I was a kid, I was laughing so hard at that I could not breathe, you know? <laughs> and that's to me what comics need to be or should be, yeah. at least my comics. That's the kind of comics I want to make. Yeah. So, um, and I just, you know, I, we've got distracted while we we're going by the pages, but I did want to give a shout out. As of this issue, we have a new colorist, uh, Ryan Cody, and you can tell he's he's just killing it here. He's just doing a great job. Ryan Cody, gentlemen, and fantastic. Me. But it, like, job, it, I love how it's it's so clean looking. Yeah, you know, like you you know you uh, we've all worked with co computer colors, and a lot of times you get. You know, it's just somebody who has a, a machine, you know, yeah. he's more of a technician than an artist and they over render things and they just, you know, you know, they, it's, it drives me nuts. And I'm like, oh, it's, yeah, me too. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I enjoy the effects when they're used properly to good effect, but yeah. you know, I mean, Ryan has said on our book, it's like the first time people have been asking him to take out special effects because most of his <laughs> editors, editors say, give that a shine, get, make that glow, you know? Mm -hmm. And if anyone's looking to back these books, myself and our admin, uh, TJ James has just posted up some links in the chat. So click those will bring you right over to the campaign. Perfect. Thank you, oh, TJ. Yeah. Thank you, TJ James. Now, um, I see that your the book is nominated for a Ringo Award. Uh, Carl, will you be going to the Baltimore Comic Con this year? Uh, I would say the last year, last book was nominated for a Ringo Award. Right, but will you be going this year to the? Uh, I haven't decided. I'm going to Heroes. I'm going to Heroes, but I haven't decided. Oh, on good. That. Oh, great. We'll yeah. be in. I'll be in Heroes, so it'll be good to see you then. Yeah, and then uh, my sister lives in North Carolina now, so I'm going to spend a few days go visit her. Oh, nice. Is that the one you're going to, Billy? Yes, Heroes Con and and um, yeah, we I don't know. We've been talking. There's a lot of talk about North Carolina these past uh, couple of I months know. over I know. here in South Carolina and is, it's, yeah. It's, are you uh, South Carolina? Is that where you are, Billy? I, I'm on Long Island. Long yeah. Island. Okay. Okay. So it's <laughs> you know it's a little crazy. Uh, you know the taxes and the gas and I mean I, it take I have a um, a Dodge Ram. And oh, I have a 26 gallon tank, I think, right, Nile. And when I go I to guess. fill my tank up, the gas, the, the 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 pump only goes up. The pump meter only goes up to a hundred dollars. <laughs> and, really? and, and my tank isn't full. And it just shuts off at that point. Crazy. It just it shuts just off at hundred. I'm like, oh, thank you. <laughs> well, you know, it's a good thing because I miss paying thirty dollars to fill my 20 gallon tank. It was like that a couple of years ago. Now it's uh, almost eighty dollars to fill my uh, Explorer up. It's unbelievable. I, yes. Well, you know, I mean, I know we're all here to talk about gas prices. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so I'm, I'm just, don't I mean, buy I'm, gas. I'm lucky. I, I don't have to drive anywhere. I'm just so lucky. I don't yeah. have to drive anywhere. Yeah. Look, bragging. Look at this guy. I know. <laughs> what a <laughs> one upper. Geez. Really? Jeez. All right. Thank I'm, you. I'm so what's the what's the story? Oh, wait, of, of Impossible Jones. Yes, the, and this issue, <laughs> 48 yeah, pages guess, As it begins, uh, Polcat and uh, um, and uh, Impossible Jones uh, are going to look into some hauntings that are happening in their neighborhood. Polcat's a real people person. He's, he's like Daredevil with a, a bow staff, but if he has any superpower, and he doesn't, he doesn't have a superpower.
But if he had one, it would be likability. People really like him. And he knows like half the city by name. You know, he'll, he'll like say, hey, Joe, how's the wife? How's, you know, how's Sally and your dog? You know, he, he knows he just, he's a people person. So when some of the small businesses are being haunted, he wants to get to the bottom of it. And he doesn't like doing a stakeout by himself. So he asks Impossible Jones to come along. And they run into some ghosts. And Karnacki, the ghost finder, who's kind of a low rent Doctor Strange. <laughs> XO. And uh, the, the, uh, that's the action of the issue. And then the emotional spine of the issue is since they're sitting around, not in a Starbucks, I'll point out, they're st sitting down on a stakeout. Um, they t we learn an awful lot about Polecat's history, which is uh, he had a relationship with another character uh, called uh, Hellhound, who is no longer around. And we, we find out how they got together. Think of like Daredevil and the Black Widow. That's kind of the vibe going on there. And uh, he and Hel he obviously has deep feelings for Hellhound, but she's no longer in his life. And, and those pieces start, you know, coming out as the story unravels. And uh, so that, that's kind of what the story is all about. Oh, nice. just got another backer too while you were talking. There you go. Almost a 760. Thank you. Wow. That's a nice, that's a nice bump, Carl. Good job. Nice. Now, how many pages is this book, this team up? Well, you know, when we first started these team up books, I thought they'd be like 24, 28 pages. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first one was 28 pages. <laughs> and then the second one was 38 pages. And this story, this is the problem with creator owned. I can keep writing until the story is done. And it's 48 yeah. pages long. It's a 48 page long story. So it's a double sized issue. It says right up there, deluxe double sized because 48 pages of story. And we just added another six pages, not of the impossible Jones story, but we have a, a, another character that people like. And I like too, named even Steven. And, uh, we're having a six-page Even Steven story drawn by uh, Alex Segura and uh, uh, written by Alex Segura and drawn by Dan Scotty. Oh, nice, Dan. Thanks for backing. Yeah, you've got you've got great, uh, great, great names too for your characters. But I, I I know exactly what you're talking about because our our latest book, uh, She Segura, was supposed mm -hmm. to be 48 pages, and now it's 62 pages because it's, you know, you just want to keep, because you can, too. We could, you know, oh, we yeah. do what we want. And I'm like, oh, I really want to extend that action scene at the end. Exactly. Let's, you know, right, Carly? Like, let's do 52 pages. Okay, so it's 52 <laughs> pages, fine. But then you're like, I don't know, maybe we can make it 60 pages. And I'm like, this would make a really great double page spread, a really good splash page uh, instead of a four panel page. Oh, yeah, we'll just put you, all right, let's make it, you know. <laughs> Do you have that yeah, same there, problem, Ron? Um, well, I was thinking about this a lot. I, I had the the problem that I feel I have is because the, the Trekker all, books always come out. Their form is, you know, the trade paperback or they call them graphic novels, but you know, it's a trade paperback. But it's so expandable. It's the stories are like eighty pages, a hundred pages, one hundred twenty pages, whatever. What do I want to accommodate? Right. So, um, so like Billy was just saying, every once in a while, I come to a to a moment and i'll say this would work really effectively as a full page you know a splash page or as a double page spread and um the the danger there i think is that a, a, a storyteller can can become a little bit self-indulgent mm -hmm. and just start serving themselves up softballs that'll be pinups they can knock out of the park you know and then i feel like i'm not telling a story anymore i'm just generating images and that's that's not my job. My job, I see, is being a storyteller. So what I kind of have to rely on is my instinct as a storyteller to say, okay, at this point, the story is starting to feel a little bit flabby or unfocused. Um, uh, I, I was blessed that I, I went to the Joe Kubert school, <laughs> and Joe, you know, was all about it's about the story, dude. You know, you, don't be self-indulgent here. Use the images and the sequence of panels that still that tells that bit of story really well. And move on. Don't get too precious about anything. So, um, yeah. so that's 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 for me. It's I, I just have to keep asking myself. Okay, I really want to, you know, extend this thing a little bit, like you guys are saying. And I do quite often. I add a panel or two here or a page or sequence there. But I'm always saying, is it still muscular? Is this story lean yeah. and does it keep moving forward? Because um, that's what drives me the craziest when I uh, when I'm reading a story or watching something on TV, if I feel like, okay, why is that moment there? Why is that character there? Why was that scene there? Um, why was that little bit of dialogue there? It's not, 
it's not tight. It's it's um somebody just fell in love with the line of dialogue and kept it in there yeah. or something yeah. like that. So yeah. um um so since with something like Trekker, a story I have been and the characters that I've been living with for 35 years now. Happy anniversary to me. Um, uh, <laughs> I, I sort of, I sort of know the world and the characters well enough that I think I, I know what the stories pretty much need by now. So, um, but yeah, it can be a danger. I think it can be a danger either way. Obviously, if you don't have enough room in your story, then you do what people used to do all the time, and that's cramming a lot of seven, eight, nine panel pages, which can be done really, really well and really sing. And then also they can just be dense and choke everything and bring things to a grinding halt. So you yeah. have to find the sweet spots. Yeah, well, I think you need, well, you you know, I, that's what experience gives all of us here. I mean, you know, you, you like you said, you've got that bell that goes off in your head where you're going, this scene is going too long. This yeah. There's some better way, at least this is how I am. I'll, I'll like look at a scene and I'll go, it, there's some better way to tell this moment. I don't know what it is, but my, my I always say the fanboy in me is bored by this scene. This fanboy in me is not interested in what I'm doing right now. And and I have to say, I go back to that a lot. Yeah, I think that's right. I mean, that comes down to that, that idea about any any creators, you know, largely you're creating something for yourself. You're doing something to amuse yourself or or satisfy some some itch that you got to scratch for yourself. And um, <laughs> and uh, it just feels like, you know, I, I always go on that theory that, I think this concept is cool or this this turn in the story is cool and I can't be the only one out there like that. Somebody else right. is going to have to find this cool too, right? And But like you say, Carl, it's like, well, the story could go here, but I just don't feel any joy in that or whatever. Mm -hmm. There's, there's got to be a better way to do that where I can be excited about telling the next theme well too. Yeah, exactly. So how do you catch yourselves though? Like for, for writers out, you know, we get so many, a lot of our viewers, you know, a lot of them are working on their own books or they, they want to build the courage to actually start crowdfunding themselves. But yeah. for writers out there, how do you catch yourself? I know you're saying you kind of have that inner voice, Carl, like the fan and you would be like, Oh, you know, all right, all right, Carl, comic creator, you're boring me. I don't like this. Give me, you know, here, how do you actually, is there a method that you can kind of train yourself to catch like, Oh my God, I'm running on this. This is too much. Well, I know one of the questions I always ask myself um, is, and maybe questions wrong thing, but one of the things I always say to myself is, what is the least amount of information the reader needs to know right now to understand what's going on? That's what I have to get across. The very least amount. They don't have to know the entire history of the Newsboy Legion to know that there are a bunch of kids who get into trouble. That's really all they have to know at this moment. Mm -hmm. you right. know? And so that's the question I ask myself constantly. What is the least amount I need to tell? And then yeah. I and I should move on, really. I mean, if I can squeeze in something else, like a passing comment to their history of the Newsboy Legion, that's gravy. But what, what you really have to focus on is that keeping it lean and focused like that. Nice. That's yeah, great yeah. advice. Excellent. It's because it's so much, you know, about editing yourself, and it's tough, especially when you have a free reign to do what you want with a, you know, with your creator own books, and you're publishing it. Yeah, and uh, so it's it's good advice. Yeah. Now let's check out. Uh, let's let's watch your campaign video. No, Please. let us not watch my. No. <laughs> yes. Is yes, gonna yes, watch yes, your campaign video? video? I will tell you right now. Um, <laughs> it's 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 very bad because. Uh, <laughs> It was done on the day before I launched, and I couldn't find my tripod, so it's handheld. It's handheld, and it's pretty bad. But go ahead if you want to. I, I it's on there for is anyone. Is it long? Is it long? No, uh, it's not. It's fine. Two no, minutes no. or something? I don't know. It's not very long. I tried to keep it short too. All right, well, let's give it a go. Go ahead. I always like to watch the videos. <laughs> you sure you guys ready to do this? I don't know. Oh, totally. Go ahead. All right, I'm doing it. I'm doing it, guys. <laughs> Hi, thanks for checking out this Kickstarter. I'm Carl Kiesel, and I have no idea where my tripod is, so I'm going to try <laughs> to do this handheld. Wish me luck. If you're coming back for more Impossible Jones, thank you. You clearly have excellent taste. If this is your first Impossible Jones book, you could not 
have picked a better place to start reading. This is our fourth Impossible Jones book and our third team up book um, because everyone loves team ups. I love team ups. This book teams up Impossible Jones with Polecat and is 48 pages long. Now, it didn't start 48 pages long. It just didn't be that long. It's how long, it's how long the story needed to be. So we let it be 48 pages. With any luck, there will be more than 48 pages of story in this book. I'm hoping we hit our goal soon with enough time to add a few stretch goals like uh, maybe an even Steven story or two. We also have some astounding alternate covers this time around. I mean, we always have great alternate covers, but uh, I am astounded by what we have this time. We have one by the brilliant Bill Sienkiewicz and another by the inimitable Stuart Immen Immenen. Inimitable Stuart Immenen. <laughs> it's a tongue twister. <laughs> there are plenty of other wonderful rewards listed below. Take a look, see what strikes your fancy, pick a few, and join us for the next impossible adventure of Impossible Jones. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> That wasn't that bad. Come on. Oh, no, you lost four backers. No, <laughs> oh, geez, why did we do that? <laughs> you know, one thing I'd like to say about that video and kind of how it applies to what we are just talking about with storytelling, um, if you guys don't mind, and that is that I've come to think of, of the, real, the real key in storytelling is, is selection of detail giving like carl was saying giving the reader exactly what they need to know the information they need and that video does that that video does a great job of you know setting up the character the story it lets you see carl as a creator and how he feels about it and the humor and the um just the, the classic comic book situation that that you're going to be going in for so it does everything it needs to <laughs> and it gives you some laughs too so it's great awesome looks good man this is great yeah, um, and you know good. what we'll do is we'll, uh, you know, we'll keep sharing it uh, on our platform, you know, through Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, help share the campaign uh, for both campaigns tonight. And everyone out there that's watching this live right now and watching it recorded. Hey, let's see if we can get to 760. I just, I just, I just, I just need that to be even. Oh, so please, let's make that to please. 760 <laughs> before the show ends. We still have one more campaign to look at. And uh, also, if you can, you know, if you like this, check it out. But, again, you know, if money's tight, we get it right. You can't back yeah. every single book that's out there, but you can yeah. share it. You know, you may know one person, you may know 20, 50, who knows? But if you yeah, can, I mean, feel free to click that link, share yeah. away, and uh, help spread the word on uh, Impossible Jones. Yeah, I mean, I always say, you know, you know people I don't. And the people you know like the things you like. So if you like Impossible Jones, I mean, they might, they're probably going to thank you for telling them about this book is what it comes down to. So, yeah, the more people that know about it, that's the only way we get more backers. I mean, the people who already know about it and want to back it have backed it. We got to find more people. Ron and I both, we Absolutely. want more friends. We want a lot more friends. <laughs> we need We're more people. Lonely. We need more friends. <laughs> Andrew Wilson, hello. Scalatucci, Kessel, Randall. Evening at the Pop XP. It's Kessel, right? Kiesel. Not Kessel. It is Kessel. That's okay. I like the so they live. Oh, I'm so that. stupid. That nice. oh, it's okay. Oh, <laughs> Anyways, now let's jump into some Drecker. Yes. <laughs> awesome, bro. Wow. Look at that. Wow. Talk about it. Talk about oh, it. Oh, you want Come me on. to talk about You're it? Crushing <laughs> it? You're crushing it. You're crushing it. Come on. Now I'll talk about oh. it. This is Trekker, Blood in the Wind, everyone. My name is Ron Randall, and I made this campaign. <laughs> now, this is incredible. This is so now for you. This is seven campaigns. Right. This is number seven. Yep. Man, and this I is your full-time gig now, right, Ron? Yeah, it is. Um, it's, uh, which is what I've always wanted, frankly. You know, when I created this character, it was, it was built to, to be my dream project, my, you know, my signature mm -hmm. thing. I mean, when I came up with it, what I was thinking about is somebody like Hal Foster doing Prince Valiant for a career or something like that. And, uh, uh, it, it, it had its first go at Dark Horse, and then it was a very sporadic sort of publishing history for a while. And finally, that was just too frustrating to try to tell an ongoing story that way, where each of the individual stories is supposed to interconnect and build. So I put the whole thing on hiatus. Um, but now I'm, now I'm back to doing it full time, uh, and Kickstarter has been a great platform for that. Um, 
I'm just really thrilled. Uh, <laughs> having the time of my life, as they say. Yeah, and now you're doing you're doing everything on your own, right? You're doing the fulfillment, all that stuff. Still, no, or did not, you... not, not that I have. Um, I use okay. Blackbox uh, as my fulfillment service. They do that. Um, I have an editor. I, I hired an editor. Oh, I've always been working with an editor. I think everybody could use one. And um, uh, I have a I have an a, an assistant on the coloring that I do, but pretty much everything else is kind of in my hands. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. I have to just pop this up because Heroin Burr knows everything. Absolutely everything. A G, just an encyclopedia of, a, of an admin and of a fan and of a friend. And he says, I always thought it was pronounced like the Kessel Run in Star Wars, but it's Kessel. Learn something new. That's a first, Billy. We <laughs> taught you something, Heroin Burr. We taught you something for once. That's true. Yes, yeah, that's fantastic. true. Fantastic. All it's right. It's good to see him wrong about that. <laughs> I know. Good to, glad you're no. human. Glad you're human. <laughs> <laughs> anyway so let's jump into this now where are we at with with uh blood and trucker blood in the wind um well so trucker is uh like it's a long form story and each of these books is is a self-contained sort of standalone adventure that's really important to me um i don't think a reader should have to read 300 pages to know what the hell is going on in a story so in that regard it's a standalone story where our our character you know, mercy st Clair. um goes to this remote frozen world she's 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 basically on this big quest it's a journey of self-discovery and also to find her place in the world and there's these large forces um that are, that are shaping the course of civilization right well at the beginning of the trekker world um she starts off with just a bounty hunter she goes out she shoots people she gets paid for it that's fine with her if, if the world could just stay like that for her that would be fine but turns out life is a lot more complicated and messy than that. And she gets drawn into this bigger and bigger and more complicated world. So where we're at now in the series is she's, she's sort of out there in the stars trying to find her path to the right way to oppose the oppressive yeah. system ruling government, trying to find allies. Uh, sometimes that goes better than others. <laughs> um, and in this story, she's uh, on this remote frozen world. And uh, I've developed a, sort of a nemesis, an arch, an arch enemy for Mercy in the series, because I think that always really energizes a, an action adventure story, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and in this one, I, I, uh, I contrived to have them both have this, this aerial this aerial one-on-one -on -one duel um, that goes on for a good, <laughs> a good protracted sequence. That was my shot at sort of trying to, trying to do an enemy a sort of classic aerial yeah. adventure thing, except instead of people flying around in biplanes, they got these personal glider sort of devices and uh i don't know i i, I love to per, put mercy in different settings and in different situations in each story it just helps to keep things helps keep my own blood flowing and my own creative energies going um and so this story i i i really sort of went for it there we've never had mercy zipping around up in the mountains and you know and dueling like that so it was a great uh, a great stretch for me a lot of great visual opportunities of course come in a situation like that so it was really fun on that, just sort of straight out action adventure level. Um, and at the same time, in the larger context of the series, it's just another crucial step as Mercy continues to sort of ramp up her, her involvement and the stakes get higher and all that stuff with each episode, with each story that goes on. So uh, a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, the, I like uh, the comment um, from Trek, you know, Trekker Talk, uh, your world built, your world building in Trekker is fantastic. Well, thanks. It's um uh from the very beginning i knew i wanted this sort of really large sort of expansive you know multi-layered world or series of worlds i guess uh i also knew when i was first starting i didn't i wasn't the writer that could really pull that stuff off mm -hmm. so that's why the first story that's one of the reasons the first stories had that narrow focus it's like mercy she's sort of got the blinders on she shoots the bad guys you know she gets paid but at the same time knowing that i had this bigger place i would need the series to go to or frankly i would have gotten bored doing it you know i, I it just couldn't keep telling stories in that confined setting for 35 years <laughs> so um so i was planting seeds in those early stories making references to other forces at play i didn't know exactly how it was all gonna i didn't have all the details worked out i will let you know but uh i figured I, i've got time uh, by the time i get to where i need that thing i will have been able to you know to do that that world building and Fortunately, the series has gone on so damn long that I've been able to <laughs> take the time to do a lot of that. 
Yeah. Now, when you're world building, right? Like, there's so many different aspects you have to like literally think of, like the architecture in these worlds, right? What mm -hmm. What is the aesthetics of the plant life? You know, the you know, uh, the topography. <laughs> you know, the animals, the people, the clothing. Mm -hmm. Is that when you're doing all that research, especially for something like Trekker, where you truly have this very very detailed universe? You know, it's a very detailed universe. Uh, how do you go about that? Do you look at like ancient civilizations? Do you see, you know, different styles of clothing and stuff like that? What's the process with that? Uh, there's a little bit of that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, a lot of, by now I've been, see the, all these white hairs guys, I've been at this a long time. And um, so over the course of my career, I've done a lot of that sort of research for other stories that I've done that, mm -hmm. and all that stuff sort of stays somewhere in your, your mental Rolodex of images up in the, up in your head. Um, so a lot of that, I mean, uh, back when I was do, drawing Arak for DC Comics, that you know Roy Thomas's thing, um, I was doing a lot of research of uh, of uh, Eastern European architecture and old civilizations and stuff like that. And I've worked on other series where I've had to do the same. So sometimes I'll um, in Tracker I'll come to a a civilization, a world, a, a culture, whatever, and I'll and I'll sort of pull some of those images out there. And sometimes I'll use use the image search features thank god and and find things to double check and make sure i've got um you know some um complementary imagery going on mm -hmm. so um it, it's a lot of its past experience and, and trying to figure out okay you know I, I want a certain look for this this culture sort of what sort of technology is it more sleek and streamlined is it kind of you know more rough hewn is it more worn down and um and just go with the, the general broad strokes and then try to pick the right details that, that seem to fit in there. Um, and having done a fair amount of world building in other projects other than Trekker, I bring some of that thinking into it too. I, is that a good answer? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it makes sense. It makes sense. Um, which is, it, it's just, it's always incredible to me, you know, because even, you know, writing, you know, your own story, it's constant, like something new always like pops up, right? Like you'll just happen to see like a, a documentary or you see right. something on a social media post, especially if you're like me and you've got a lot of people who share, you know, historic things or, or whatever. It's like, oh my God, that'd be cool. And then all of a sudden you want to like redo something because now you're inspired by this to with, to add a certain aesthetic into your world or, you know, even a species. Sometimes you see something and all of a sudden you're like, oh my God. I can make a new species with that. You know, it's like something that influences you. So I always, you know, it's just always a, a process. And, you know, seeing a, a veteran like yourself who has worked on this, like you said, 35 years, you've really built up a true Trekker universe. <laughs> well, thanks. And, you know, one thing that helps me, because you're, you're right, as I'm watching a, a TV show or reading a book, I'll, I'll see a, whether it's a, some kind of a prop or device or some kind of a set piece of action or a creature, like you're saying, and, and in the back of my mind, there's always a, is that something I can steal and use in Trekker, you know? <laughs> and yeah. um, I mean, by now, I've got certain rules that I play with in, in Trekker's world where, you know, there's got to have a, a certain range of technology and activities that I think would fit within the reality that I've tried to create for Trekkers. So that's one thing that can help strain out some of that stuff. No, I, mm -hmm. I think that's a really cool idea. I just don't think it fits in in Trekker's world. It just doesn't yeah. doesn't play well with this stuff. Um, and the other thing is, since I've got the rough armature or skeleton for the series worked out, I sort of know the the main beats of the stories that I have mm -hmm. left to tell with Trekker. And sometimes that can also help me to to be selective in the things that I pull from. I'll say, is that something that can work in the universe? Yeah. I, oh, I think in this story something like that could could play. So. Sometimes I'm filing something away saying, okay, a couple of stories down the road. I think I can use that little bit, stuff yeah. like that. And yeah, we got a great comment here from uh, Dread. Nowadays, the really good quality stuff is coming from creator-owned properties from veterans of the comic biz, such as these gentlemen on the panel. Mm. Indeed. Wow. Thank you. It is. Nice. And, and it's so true. I mean, it really, it's funny. Uh, I did, um, we, we've got, me and Billy, we've, we've got uh, John Samino and uh, Steve Houston have their podcast now on our channel, on our mm -hmm. Pop XP channel. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I did a recording with them with Tom DeFalco and Ron Friends, and I posted a clip because Ron was saying that Tom's really good at predicting. 
And he's like, you know, he goes, Tom's prediction was that mainstream comics and stuff would go away. This was many years ago. And that it would actually transform into really creators, basically crowdfunding, you know, creators just direct market to the fans. And, and he said something, you know, that, you know, there's more people out there, you know, more people want to make comics than there's actually people out there that want to read them. <laughs> and, and, and i think it's very true because the creators are so critical of one another nowadays it seems right mm -hmm. um but it makes sense because now you know with technology and everything it's it's natural progression right uh certain industries get smaller that were once yeah. big and blah 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 but they survive right there's yeah. there's still a market for them and I, I think it is true you've got guys like yourselves that have worked on you know these books that inspired guys like me my whole life and now you're now you are doing your own thing and you're successful at it and because you've you guys learned so much in the mainstream you can take all that you learned with your creative freedom which may have been suppressed at sometimes or may it maybe it was allowed to flourish but you can literally do what you want the way you want with you know feedback direct from your fans where you can go on streams like this uh social media and I do believe that Dread is right. The quality of the books, from especially from the mainstream creators that are now coming into crowdfunding, I, I think it far surpasses what we were getting from you know DC, Marvel, you know all the all the bigger publishers. And uh, it, it, it's a trend I like to mm -hmm. see, you know. And and I mean for you guys, you know, including you, Billy. I mean. You, you do you notice that too, or am I just embellishing <laughs> on a fantasy? No, no, you know? well, I think, yeah, well, I made my you know, everything I have is is from being a self publisher, really, with all the fans. I mean, I, I had fun working for, for DC, I did a little bit of work for Marvel, I just did one series for them, but I had a lot of, I, you know, I'd say a lot of success working for DC and and all, but um, but you know, the thing that you learn and um. Is that and you learn rather quickly is that uh you know you um you don't own those characters they do yeah no, no matter how much true. you love them and uh it just seems like I, I'm addressing the question about that there are more people who want to make comics that are reading them <laughs> um I think what's going on today is that a lot of the new crop if I may say that without sounding like an old fogey um I don't think they love those characters like we did um I I know I got into comics because I loved comics. Mm -hmm. A lot of them seem to have gotten it where it's been handed to them. Oh, you should write a comic. Oh, yeah? Well, that's a great idea. And they write the comic because this is something they want to be a Netflix series or a movie or something. Mm -hmm. um, or put their stamp on these characters that aren't theirs, that aren't that they didn't create. And I know I'm going off a bit of a tangent, but I just feel <laughs> like I think that when we got in and with the work we did for the mainstream, we realized that we're standing on the shoulders of giants. Yeah. And we respected them and their legacy enough not to piss on their heads. Um, I don't see that happening with a lot of what's going on in mainstream comics today. Um, yeah. That said, yes, I do think that there's more people want to make comics and read them. But um, sorry, I just went off on a little a, a little thing because I was uh, just thinking about that and and uh, um, I like this comment. Tucci it, made his bones for most. People. On their dad's sack. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. No, but uh, yeah, and and it's all because of the fans, you know, directly with the fans, and 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 especially as you're an independent publisher or self publisher, you know, the fans hold you accountable because we don't have these multi million dollar, you know, marketing firms, you know, or, or corporations behind us. We don't have that eight hundred pound gorilla behind us. You don't have someone getting paid, you know, or a team of people getting paid to promote your books for you. No, no we you, don't. you've got to do it yourself. Right. So when, you know, when the promotion department's working, the art department isn't <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Boy, I knew that. Right. Yeah. And, and when the art department's working, the, the, you know, the, the writing department's not working. That's just the way it is. But um, but we make it work. And I think it's that passion that that glosses over. And that's why you see people like yourselves that you are having such great success at crowdfunding. Um, at doing Kickstarters or Indiegogos for those who do Indiegogos and stuff as well, uh, because the fans see that. They see that passion. They see, I mean, Ron, how many have you done, right? How many Trekker campaigns have you done already? You know, it's mm -hmm. right. it's astonishing. It's it's and it, and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And I think the fans see that because they hold you accountable to deliver. 
a good mm-hmm. product to them. And it does, and again, it doesn't have to be, you know, not everyone's Brian Polito is getting out four or five project projects a, a year, mm-hmm. right? Some people do have that European standard. They get out, you know, they launch a crowdfunding book and they get it out a year or two later, three years later, as long as, but that's, you know, but again, we're all doing everything. Um, and, uh, but the fans keep coming back because I think they see that passion. They see how much this means to us mm-hmm. um, and, and our families. And again, it's, you know, we, we didn't get into it for the money, unfortunately. No. Yep, yep. <laughs> I, dollars. We, did, we were dollars. all thoroughly disappointed. Yeah. 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 I, I always I always say, you know, I, I love comics. I don't think there's anything else I could do. I mean, if right. comics I, I I'd be working at Burger King, really, honestly. <laughs> but um I, I always say I'm following the, the Iron Man business model, which is existent in obscurity for 40 years and then become an overnight sensation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think I'm ever gonna get rich off of my characters, but maybe my kids will, you know. <laughs> this is something I, I can know. Leave. Yeah. That's true. And then at Rod, Advent, Rod Adventure Network, Rad Adventure Network, uh, Ron and Carl's campaigns are a lot of fun to follow. Well, thank you very much. Oh, and Billy, you forgot the billing department, by the way. I don't do the, uh, Debbie does the billing department. I don't do that. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> but all right. So let's, uh, let's get back into Trekker here. And uh, so, you know, Ron, with your series here, well, A, both of you guys have a bunch of great tiers in your campaigns and different features and stuff. Um, With with the different levels and stuff you have here, uh, original art, do you do a lot of original art in your campaigns, Ron? Um, Commissions, yes, where, you know, somebody can play. I have a a level where you can get like just an ink wash commission, black and white with a little gray ink wash on it. And I do ones, uh, full watercolor commissions, too. Those are always a, a lot of fun to feel, you know, you never know what you're going to get requested when you're doing commissions. Mm-hmm. And uh, it can be really fun and invigorating to, ah, oh, haven't drawn that character or haven't drawn that character in 15 years, you know, haven't ever heard of that character, do a little research. Um, so I love doing those. I, I don't offer a lot of already done original art on the campaigns. Mm-hmm. I, I did a couple on this one. Um of Trekker drawings that I'd done in, in years past that we used for like, you know, a pinup in a, in a yearbook for a comic convention, that sort of stuff. But as far as the original art, interior original art, I don't sell mm-hmm. Trekker original interior art. Um, I never have, except for the level on my campaign, you can pledge that to be drawn into the book because then I'll mm-hmm. draw a backer in the book and they will get the page of original art that they appear on. Um, oh, that's so cool. The, it's an it's it's a high level, but it's an always a popular one. So if you want to get an interior page of Trekker art, that's the only way to get it. So um, so yeah, but you're right. It's really um, yeah. it's really uh, there's an art in that and figuring out how many pledge levels to have and what you want to put at the mall. The temptation is to keep hanging ornaments on the tree, you know, mm-hmm. come back with this level and this level and this level, and it just become it just becomes bewildering for for you as a creator to try to follow it. And for backers to sort out which of these 79 <laughs> levels do I want to pledge at. So uh, I yeah. try to keep it, and, I, and Carl, I think, does the same thing. Try to keep it to a manageable level where it's easy for a reader to keep track of, or a backer to back, you know, to keep track of what the options are and pick out something that is clearly the one that fits them best. That's that's the goal, to try to keep it clear, you know? Yeah. yeah. And we had a uh, $5 super chat from Anton. Thank you so much for that. Uh, it's really good to see you streaming, Ron. I've been a big oh. fan of what you've been doing, what you've been building with Trekker for a while now. Do you do this full time? Yeah, the answer is yeah. And I, I think now you, you sort of mentioned that. And uh, that's one thing I, I, I do like to talk about just a little bit is that, you know, I, I get a lot of um, my backers that, that say, oh, you, you, they like, like the rad adventure people were saying um carl's campaign and my campaign are fun to follow and i think one reason for that is we have a lot of time during the campaign we can do a lot of you know posting of images and trying to create playful little tweets and stuff like that and interact with the backers on a, on a pretty quickly when i get a comment or something from, or a question from a backer i can get right in there and get back to them because this is my job um i don't yeah. i don't a lot of people that run run kickstarters I don't know about Indiegogo. I would assume similarly. Um, they might have a full-time job, and this is sort of a side gig for them or a hobby or something like that. 
I can't imagine. It takes so much energy to create a comic book and write it and draw it and then run the campaign and fulfill it. More power to them. I, I, I can't imagine doing that. And the only thing that lets me be as present in the campaign and take the time to build a campaign as carefully as I can and all that stuff is that because the backers are there to support it as strongly as they do, I can sort of eke out a living doing this. <laughs> hundreds and hundreds of dollars, as you guys yeah, say. Right. <laughs> that's a that's a pretty big figure up there on the board, you know, 50, 54, almost fifty-five thousand dollars for Trekker. That's that's a good number, but when I factor in what it costs to print the book and ship the book and pay the fulfillment service. And then the months that it takes me to write the book and draw the book and color the book right. and letter the book, you know, all that stuff. Um, I'm not getting rich off of this stuff. And I'm sure Carl no. would say the same thing. We're, we're, yeah. it's, 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 it can be very deceptive to see that big number, you know, um, uh, all of which is just to say, I'm glad that the fans are there to support Carl and me as they are, because that's what lets us do a job that I think, I feel proud of, you know, what, what I think Carl and I have both been able to accomplish with this stuff and Billy too, you know, just, just fantastic stuff. Um, and, and as Billy was saying, it's, it's because of the backers, you know, I, I always call it the Trekker mm -hmm. community because mm -hmm. I can't do it without, they can't read Trekker without me. I can't make Trekker without them. We, you know, it's, it's, it's as symbiotic as it can possibly be. Right. And I guess you can't <laughs> call them Trekkies, huh? No, no I, it's I, I, it's <laughs> soon if he calls them Trekkies. Yeah. <laughs> I just call it the Trekker community or Trekker Troopers or Trekker Pals, you know, after Trekker yeah, Troopers is cool. Trekker yeah. Troopers, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's really cool. Go with. <laughs> just a Treks mix of fans, huh? <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, oh, oh. What? I'm not going to use that one. <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> I'm here all night, Carl. I'm here all night. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, speaking, let's see. Did, did anyone get you to 760? I want that even number. Come on. No! Come on. You get there. Yeah, it'll be there soon. Oh, there it is. Oh, oh yeah. like, had to, Just had to refresh it. Like it didn't happen. It's <laughs> like on, you snapped on, your fingers on, and it happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Niall. Thank you for making that happen. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, whoever backed it. There we go. Yeah, well, and I thank, them. Them. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Let's check out your uh, campaign uh, video, Ryan. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ron Randall. Thanks for checking out this campaign for an all-new graphic novel starring 23rd century bounty hunter or trekker, Mercy St. Clair. I've made a lot of comics in my day, but nothing is as rewarding and exciting to me as being able to continue to tell Mercy and Molly's adventures thanks to the incredible support of their fans. I hope you'll be one of them. Now, this is my seventh trekker campaign, but if you're new to Mercy's world, you couldn't have picked a better time to jump on board. Because While Blood in the Wind continues Mercy's journey, featuring all the elements longtime readers have come to expect, it's also, in many ways, a new beginning for Mercy, as she turns the page and strikes out on a new path in her quest to oppose the forces of the oppressive system ruling council. I also make sure that each volume of Tracker works as a great introduction to Mercy and her world, as well as a thrilling next standalone journey for long time readers. So please check out the many reward tiers, everything from the book itself to the ketchup bundle containing the complete Trekker library of books to date, to original ink wash and watercolor commissions, to being drawn into the book and getting the page of original art featuring your appearance in Mercy's world. And then bundle up. 
We've got a long, cold trek ahead of us. I'll see you on the trail. That has such a great soundtrack to it. Yeah. <laughs> so so is that ben sound. So is there a um, is there a place where people can go to get their uh, like like you could download free music at all for your videos? Yeah, right. yeah. Um, they a place like that is um, uh, you can either there are some clips that are uh, that are free you can download free, and others you pay you pay a, a small yeah. a nominal amount of money to use them for. For this sort of limited usage and and that stuff, so yeah, yeah, I've done the same thing. Pond Five is another place you can get free music or yeah. very cheap music. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, like that well, little voice that says Pond Five. Yes, yes exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. You've obviously been there. <laughs> <laughs> is is our music on uh, the new she video Pond Five, Nile? No, that is oh. actually Engato. Engato. That's where I pay an expensive monthly subscription. And I get all the stuff and the licenses uh, until I stop paying that monthly subscription. <laughs> so feel free to send in those super chats. <laughs> hey, uh, Ron, how many issues of Trekker do you have out there now? Um, okay, so the books that are available, there's there's a hardcover book that has all the old Trekker stuff from when I first started doing a Dark Horse back in the day. So if you want to count that as one volume, that's one. Inside of that are about the equivalent of 12, 12 books of Trekker, you know, the stories that you have for. Mm -hmm. So there's that one hardcover, and then there are, this is the sixth trade paperback of new adventures that, that follow after that hardcover. So that's, that's how I'd count them, yeah. I think what you should do, if you, I'm just saying if I was you and I had six of these new issues, um, which total pages, I don't know, what it, how many pages do you think it is roughly? Oh, it's another yeah something like that yeah yeah what well, uh, well, have you considered doing an omnibus um well what i'm what i'm gonna do is so i've got the first hardcover that's like 550 mm -hmm. some pages mm -hmm. um so i'm gonna be doing a second hardcover volume that'll have the next five or so hundred pages of trek run at um so i'll be i'll be collecting i can't an omnibus i can't do a, a literal omnibus where i have every page of track run at. that's that's a couple thousand pages. <laughs> it just unreal. Well, you could do the well, you could do the but do, the second one, the, the, the second hardcover, you could call it an omnibus. Don't sell yourself short. Yeah, and do have like, Jeff Smith have like you know, style have, omnibus. Have rough character design sketches, some early, early stuff, like when you were developing yeah. it, you know, and throw a bunch of things in there because it's people love the idea of an omnibus. Um, mm -hmm. to that it doesn't have to be because you can have on the bus volume one, you could have on the bus right. volume two, volume three, volume four. Well, that, that, yeah, that, and that, that's basically what I'm talking about doing. So, the, the next hardcover will be uh, the complete journey volume two, um, mm. is, is what I'm calling it, which is basically, I, I got to be honest, I got a full disclosure here. That was Carl's idea. Uh, we were, we were, I don't know if you remember this, Carl, we were having, we were having a beer, uh, probably a couple of years ago now, yeah. and I was just making my, I was making my trade paperback collections of Trekker and. And, and everything and, and Carl's one and, and I was fretting it because at the time all those earlier stuff stories that had come out from Dark Horse those were all, all out of print now so I was thinking how am I going to be able to be at a convention when somebody comes up and says where's the first Trekker story and I'll, I'll say you can't get it anymore and that was just that was unacceptable so um, Carl's the one who said you know you should you should do a, a big hardcover collection get all that other story stuff uh, that's out of print put it out 
oversized. What was whatever was done in black and white before, you should make it all in color so that the entire series will eventually be unified in presentation, right? All full color stuff. So um, that's that's that was a good beer. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, I think that's a great business practice anyway, especially with crowdfunding. Because if you're if you're spending drinking, the time drinking beer, drinking beer. Yes, drinking beer. <laughs> you can make that a tier level first off <laughs> that they can buy you a beer. But you know, if you're if you're doing, you know, say you're you're doing your, you know, your story arc and it's X amount of books that it's gonna be, you know, then you should follow that up with just like your, you know, your trade paperback, your hard book, mm -hmm. your hardcover. So while yeah. that's funding, you can work on the next series. So hopefully while you're you're funding that and getting that moving, because it's already done. So yeah, now it's just right. designing the one book. You can then hopefully get your next book that's going to be in your next arc of stories, right? Or your know, next story mm -hmm. arcs. And then you hopefully can have that almost done when you crowdfund, you know, and try to keep up the momentum. Nailed so that's a nice buffer. That's what Ron does. Brain. Yeah, that's, that's exactly yeah, Ron does do what works that way. Yeah, no, I don't. Yeah. I know he does. That's what I'm saying. It's a good business practice, I think, yeah. if you use crowdfunding the way you do, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, I, you know, I've got to say, again, that's another advantage that I have that that so many Kickstarter uh, creators don't have is that when I hit the launch button on my campaign, at, at least that main lead story of Trekker, like, you know, 80 or so pages, that, that entire main story is already all done. It's, you know, it's the files are pretty much ready to go off to the printer. And then I just have the ancillary stuff to assemble and put together in the short little backup story where I draw um, backers into the story. I have to do that stuff, but you know, the lion's share of the book is already done before I, before I launch. And so um, that just removes a lot of possible complications that can cause all sorts of delays and distractions in the, in the process. So um, I'm happy I'm in that position to do that. And yeah, but yeah. I've, I've kind of burned through all of my lead time by now. <laughs> so the next campaign for a hardcover, like you just said, Niall, that's mm -hmm. where that will be basically funding work that's already done. So I can be trying to get caught up or, or get ahead, I guess you could say on the, on the new stories going on too. It's, yeah. it's, it's that overlapping of tasks. Like if you're in comic books, you're always doing that. You know, you're, you're working on mm -hmm. the pencils on this thing now and you got to screw you and do some inks on that and then go back into the script. So you're really the gerbil on the wheel in this business. <laughs> exactly. And we got another super chat. Thank you, Anton. Uh, $2 super chat. How many 500 page volumes do you plan to produce? Oh, I don't know. Wouldn't that be telling? That's almost uh, like giving a tip of the hat to how long the series is going to be. I, I'm just so leery about um, giving away spoilers. Maybe more than I should be, I guess. But uh, there will be more than two. <laughs> <laughs> Nice, nice. Well, hey, guys, thanks so much for hanging out with us. Uh, and again, everyone out there that's watching this live or recorded, make sure to head on over. The links are below, by the way. And while you're down there, make sure to click that subscribe button, hit the bell, hit the like button, share this out. And uh, again, check out the campaigns. You've got uh, Impossible 2C with Impossible Jones. Uh, click on that, you know, back it, share it. Um, let's get this over to, let's see, you're at 54, you're at 30. We got a competition going on here, don't we? So we got a, let's well, the get, competition ended earlier. Our, no, we're, 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 no, we're starting a new competition. We can't just, go <laughs> on. all right. Oh, wait, how many backers does right. Ron have? How many backers does Ron have? Uh, Ron. Oh, oh, who's oh, that? Whoops. Oh, yeah, geez. 84. I was hoping I would catch up with him a little and maybe we could have another competition to see who hit 800 first. All yeah, right, whoever cool. gets here's the new competition. Whoever yeah. gets to one hundred thousand dollars first, <laughs> you get to spend the weekend at Carl's house or Ron's house, depending <laughs> on who the winner is. <laughs> I'll tell you, if someone pledges a hundred thousand dollars to my campaign right now, they they can come to my house. They I mean, <laughs> yeah. they will be welcome with open arms. Let me just say they when they come over, they just spin your spinner rack and leave. Oh, yeah, that's just, yeah, but if that's what they want to do, I do not judge. Uh, well, I live on the coast, so they should, you know, come to my house. I got a cool beach house. Oh, there you go. He's like, I got the beach. Yeah, we'll go to the fire pit. Have some I mean, beers. I have a spinner rack, but I got an ocean, so <laughs> <laughs> beat that, Kiesel. Uh, all right. Well, again, again, guys, thanks so much for hanging out with us tonight. It's really cool to catch up with what you guys are doing. Your campaigns are a lot of fun. Uh, the chat had a lot of fun. Um, 
everyone's wishing you guys good luck great show um yeah and if you guys have any other campaigns going on or if you ever want to hang out on a stream if you see any little advertisements feel free to to hang out you guys campaigns are rocking we have 14 days left on carl's campaign we have seven days left on ron's so if you get a chance check it out you know if this is recording these campaigns are are still going on and you're watching this give it a look and if, you know if you want continue helping support you know indie comics self-publishing and uh give all these great campaigns a share uh ron uh, ron or carl do you have anything uh anything you want to say before we head out carl i'm, I'm i don't know i'm 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 not, i'm talked out obviously can't even can't even <laughs> form words anymore <laughs> i just i mostly just want to say it's a blast spending time with you guys i love it every time you have this yeah. on the show really Anytime, appreciate everything, man. everything that you're doing to sort of be the flag waivers and the standard bearers that you are for for indie mm -hmm. comic stuff um like you like you were saying earlier I know I, I'm sure that the the viewers can just sense the the passion that we all have for what we're doing here, and and the the ability to share that directly, you know, with the backers because of crowdfunding. You know, it's just it's. Uh, I never, when I was getting started in comics, I never thought we would have experiences like this, and it could be this rich and fulfilling. So, thank you guys for being such a big part of that and keeping it all going for us all. Of course. Mm -hmm. And like I said, anytime you guys, you guys are, are giants. So it's, <laughs> it's always a privilege to have you on. So thank oh, you. Thanks so much guys. Hey, hey now, can please I share do. my screen real quick? Yes, please do. I was gonna. Oh, are you? okay. Well, I want to thank everybody. We have oh. for She Sakura on kicks on Indiegogo, not our Kickstarter. We have, it's on Kickstarter as well. Um, mm -hmm. But our Indiegogo, we're down to our last 29 hours. Oh, we hit, we hit 1200 backers. <laughs> oh, oh. Nice. Um, Thank you guys. Uh, uh, we're gonna go. We, we will go into demand. Debbie doesn't want to. I want to. Uh, but we'll we'll have to. Um, some some of our uh, perks will be during in, in demand phase because we want to start producing them because this book is almost finished um, ourselves. Where the the book was expanded to sixty two pages of story and art, and uh, I think we have like eight pages left to draw and color. So uh, thank you guys. Thank you all. I'll put the campaign for some reason the uh, my update came in so uh but thanks guys i mean we're almost at, we're almost at $121,000 which Amazing. puts us over um i think we surpassed um the, yeah we surpassed haikyo yeah. and we wow. still have uh on our indiegogo our last uh, original graphic novel and we have 29 hours to go and tomorrow night we'll be streaming on Ethan's show to do a little close out party Hope you'll all join us, Scala. Hope you'll join us too. Have a what little. What time uh, are you guys? What time are you guys doing it? I don't know yet. Maybe eight, nine o'clock. I'll I'll okay. find out from him. And uh, we're gonna have some wine and have a good time and just thank everybody and uh, really appreciate. It. It's been a wonderful twenty nine days or twenty eight days. I think it's a twenty nine day campaign. Those by so fast. I know, right? It's so fast. Nice, and you, so, and you got. <coughs> excuse me, sorry. And oh, uh, you're at sixty two thousand on your Kickstarter. Holy smokes! This yeah, Billy didn't even do that. It says Deborah on it. De Billy has nothing to do with that. <laughs> That's why he's like, you know, Debbie doesn't want to go in demand, but I do because she's behind the scenes. She's cranking got away. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you what guys for coming on. We'll hit that stretch goal. Um, I hope we can hit it by the time we close out. Uh, we got four, a little over four thousand dollars left, and uh, everyone gets a. Nice bookmark that you made. Oh, that's a nice one. Thank you. The kick to the face bookmark. <laughs> with high heels. With heels. high heels. Yes. Yes, it's it's a fight in a bathroom on the Long Island Railroad. So I always love the scene from um oh geez the Bond film when he's fighting Ro Robert Shaw in the in the elevator. Yeah. So yeah he only right, lived right. twice, I think. Uh, anyway, so that that remember that I love that close you know yeah. quarters yeah. battle, and we actually have a scene there where she's fighting this. This character named Yuli, and he's basically Yul Brenner from Westworld. And uh, oh, there you go. So, they, so they have this fight in this bathroom, and he shoves her face in the toilet. And then uh, it's a lot of it's, it's a toilet. lot of fun. This is her daughter. Uh, he's so, from he's from Long Island. Long yeah, Long Island. Long Island. <laughs> the toilet. I like turtlet. Yeah, he's not. So thank you all. Uh, hope to see you guys tomorrow night. And uh, it's it's been wonderful. And thank you, gentlemen, too, for joining us tonight. Oh, it's so, been a pleasure. Been a pleasure. great pleasure. Yeah. All right, everyone. Well, have yourselves a great weekend. Back some great campaigns. Thanks again to Ron, <laughs> Carl, and Billy, as always. What a blast. Everyone have a good one, and we'll see you all on the next whatever we're streaming next week. Salud. <laughs> Thanks, guys. See you guys later. Thanks, Thanks guys. Bye.
Hey everyone, thank you for joining us on Pop XP. If you haven't already, make sure to click that subscribe button and also click the bell for notifications when we go live and we upload some awesome new content. Also, don't forget to head on over to Twitter and follow us at the Pop XP and over on Instagram at the Pop XP. Thanks again, everyone, and we'll see you soon.